In today's video, we're going to be looking at the new Hikvision AccuSense G2 ISU SL cameras. So firstly, we need to open up Internet Explorer as administrator. You may get a pop-up for user account control. If you do, just click yes, just ensures that it is running as administrator. For ourselves, we're going to dial into the recorder as our camera is connected directly to the back of it. However, if your camera is on the network, you'll be able to dial into the IP address directly of the camera. So just log into the recorder here. Now to gain access to the camera itself, I need to go to configuration and then under network, advanced settings, and then other. And then from here, we can enable virtual host. This will enable us to get access to the camera directly from the recorder. If we go back to system, camera management, and IP camera, this will give us the list of cameras. So find the one that you want and click the link on the right hand side. And this will then take us directly to the camera. So we'll be able to adjust settings from here. So just log into the camera here. And once we're into the camera itself, we can see the live view. If we click configuration, we can then check a few things first. Under system settings, VCA resource needs to be set as smart event. Face capture and monitoring are the other two options here. However, if it's not on smart event, you will lose the AccuSense functionality under the event settings. So if we go to event, smart event and intrusion detection, here's one we prepared earlier. So it's enabled and we've set minimum and maximum size boxes uh, with a detection area, as you can see on screen. We've set it as a human form rather than vehicle. We've set threshold, which we can adjust with the slider and the same for the sensitivity. And we'll just click save. If we go to arming schedule, by default, this is set to be all day, every day across the week. However, if we click onto it, we can adjust these times. So let's say 6.30 in the morning till six o'clock in the evening. We can then copy that schedule across multiple days of the week. So Monday through till Friday, leaving Saturday and Sunday full days and then click save. If we go to linkage method, we've got this set to notify surveillance center. So we'll get notifications to hit connect and we've got it set as a flashing alarm. Now flashing alarm and audible warning are both independent of each other. So you can have one or the other or both at the same time or neither, entirely up to you. So we'll just go through the setup as a line crossing. So we'll enable this and we can then set detection area, select the line and drag this to where we want it to be on screen. We can set minimum and maximum size boxes. So I'll just draw these on here, nice and simple. Again, we can set this to be a human or vehicle form. So we still want human and we want the different directions. So you've got A to B, B to A or either direction. And again, you can adjust the sensitivity by the slider. Click save and go to arming schedule. Again, by default, set all day, every day across the week. But if we just click on here, we can adjust the times again. So let's go from 6.30 in the morning till six o'clock in the evening. And then click copy this across to Monday to Friday. And then click OK. And then click Save. Under linkage method, again, notify surveillance center, we've got ticked. So we'll get our notifications to hit connect. And we can again select flashing alarm or audible warning as individual items. So I'll just set audible warning without the light. And hit save. Now to configure the audible warnings and the flashing lights, we need to go to basic event and on the top right hand side, we've got flashing alarm output. From here, we can set the flashing lights duration. And this is range anywhere from one to 60. Anything larger than 60 and it won't let you enter it, it'll give you an error. So we'll set this as 15 seconds. We can adjust the frequency of the flashing light. So high, medium, low, or always on. Again, the schedule for when this light wants to be active. So if you only want this to be active during night time and not during the day, we can adjust this here. So we'll leave from midnight till 6.30 in the morning and then we want in the evening. So I'll we'll set this from 6.30 in the evening until midnight. And we can then copy that again across the entire week. So you won't get any light during the day, only at night time. And then hit save. For the audible alarm, again, we have a couple of different sound type options. We've got warning, prompt, and custom. Warning will give you a selection of predetermined, pre-recorded messages. You can select one and click test to listen to it. And you can then set how many times this alarm plays. This is a range from one to 50. So anywhere in there will be fine. 
anything larger than 50 and again it won't let you set it um, so we'll set ours nice and low five times playing and again we can set the sound volume from the speaker itself and we can set the alarming schedule underneath here as with all the others so we'll set this from midnight through till 6 30 in the morning and click save and we want it on the evening as well and then we can then again copy that across multiple days of the week so monday through till friday so saturday and sunday you'll always get the warning and then hit save and that's it all configured The other options you've got are prompt, which is a simple noise, and custom. Um, you can select your own file. So if we click add, you can upload a .wav mono sound audio file with a size smaller than 512 kilobytes with a sampling rate of 8 kilohertz. And that's it. Nice and simple, easy to set up, and you're all good to go.